Good morning. We're really glad you're here. Hope you had a good week. <laughs> Posture means a lot, doesn't it? Sometimes it feels like we can get just caught in the rhythm of what we always do and what we always say. Sometimes we can be distracted. Let's remember that our posture is important, not just the posture of our bodies or the posture of our faces, but the posture of our hearts as we come here as God's people. If this is your first Sunday, that, that's not usually how we begin. Uh, we're glad you're here. If it is your first Sunday, uh, I want to encourage you to fill out a communication card, a connection card, drop it by the information center. Uh, we'd love to, to connect with you. Can I get an amen? Sometimes it's just easy to get caught up in what we always do every week. We always watch the countdown timer, and it starts, and the music starts, and we sing some songs, some we like, some we don't like. We just sing. We stand sometimes for too long, sometimes not long enough, and then we sit, and then we have the announcements, and then we look at the gather scatter graph, and then we listen to the message, and then we go home, and we get in our cars, and we go about our weeks, and then we come back next week. God is so much more active and alive than that yes. meaningless rhythm. Thank you. Amen. So I, I just want to encourage you, uh, if, if your heart is kind of wrapped up like the first bill that got up here, uh, I want to encourage you, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, brother and sister. Uh, listen to God. Because he is speaking to us. We're excited for what God is up to in our church body. We're very excited what he's doing. Uh, there's a lot of announcements in your bulletin. Please read those. They're, they're very important. They're the primary way we communicate uh, the good things going on. Operation Rolling Thunder, praying for our whole county, our whole world, uh, is on Thursday. There are new prayer, uh, prayer guides available in the foyer. Uh, men's group for a Christmas hymn sing. The practice is Saturday at 10 a.m., and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about life groups. Pastor Tyler's been talking about life groups and the importance of life groups. I have to tell you that there was a point in my life uh, when I was a Christian that I thought that small groups, life groups were a complete waste of time. That I didn't want to listen to a bunch of people's feelings. I didn't want to sit around and talk about what uh, other people thought. I just, I wanted to go to church, do my thing and move on. Uh, and then it was required that I was a part of a small group. And it radically changed my view on Christian growth. And I want to encourage you, if you think that life groups are a waste of time, uh, give, give this sign up a try. Uh, I can guarantee it's not a waste of time. Uh, Darby and I are very busy, and <laughs> just like all the rest of us are really busy. And uh, we believe in this enough to make it a priority. And I want to challenge you. Pastor Tyler's going to preach today. He's going to bring an, an awesome message. Uh, we've been talking through it, and, and it's, man, it's good. Good stuff in the Word. And at the end, Pastor Tyler is going to challenge you to sign up for life groups. So I just want to prepare you right now to be praying about that. Today is the last day to sign up for life groups. Uh, young, old, kids, no kids, we want everybody because we are a diverse church family. We're in it together. Amen? All right, I've done enough talking. Uh, let's, uh, let's pray, uh, and then uh, I'm going to have Tyler come up front. Father, we, uh, we come before you. We pray that you would create in us a posture that is starving for your word, God, that we are passionate about your work and God, that we are receptive to the leading of your spirit. God, we thank you. We have so many things to be thankful for. We come to you with great praises today, God. We also come with heartaches. We pray that this is the place, God, where we can be reoriented. That we can get you back in our sights. And that we can praise the great things you're up to, God. We pray for life groups and what you will do through them in the future, God. And we praise you for the great, uh, the great signups that are going on now. Father, we look forward to this message from Pastor Tyler. We thank you for bringing him here to our church body. God, for the Mitchell family. Uh, and we see that that's an answer to the prayer we prayed back in November and December when we were in a different building, God. We see you at work. And we look forward to how you'll be at work in the future for your glory. And all of God's people said together, Amen.
Pastor Tyler, come on, come on up front. Uh, I'm, I'm pumped, man. I have to tell you, it's a blessing to work with this guy. I get to spend, oh. we spend a lot of time together. Even sometimes our days off and we still get along. Uh, <laughs> you know uh, Tyler's quality and we look forward to the word. Thanks, Pastor Tyler. Thanks, Bill. So uh, I want to thank everybody who's just been praying for me this week. Um, seems like out of all the weeks, uh, you know, this week has been the one filled with the most distractions and uh, just stuff going on. And um, I don't think that's a mistake. Like, I feel like when good things are happening, the enemy kind of ramps it up. And so I just want to thank you guys for, uh, for praying for me and, and um, just supporting me. And uh, yeah, and, and Bill too. It's, it's cool to live out community with the... Uh, in the in the church staff and and um, be a part of of what's going on and, and being on the same page with Bill and and just living life with with Bill is really cool. So um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about why we need each other and and the the point is that we need each other. And I just want to say in the front that this isn't going to be like a, a thirty minute pitch for life groups. Uh, there's going to be more to it than that. Um, because I really think that our need for each other and our need for community um, is more of an identity of who we are in Christ, uh, more than just getting you guys to, hey, let's, let's all sign up for life groups, which you should. You should definitely sign up for life groups, and it's going to be a place where you can set aside time to be in community, but ultimately, um, it's, it, we need each other because that's how God's designed us. So that's that's what I want to talk about today. Um, but before we do that, we have been sitting for a little bit, so I want everybody to stand up. And uh, on the back of your bulletins, you'll have the whole, um, the whole passage that we're going to look at today. And uh, let's read this together, okay? Does that sound good to everybody? All right, let's read this together. Follow me. Uh, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, and the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Okay, thanks, you're dismissed. Just follow that this week. Uh, no, okay, go ahead and take a seat. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. And uh, as I was thinking about this, um, I thought back to a, a time in my life that was really exciting, uh, where the world, they tell you that the world is your oyster or, or whatever. Um, I graduated from college in 2006, and uh, I, that summer I got my first real job. And just about that time, I wrote down year by year, what I expected my life to look like. So 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, I, about 10 years, I wrote down year for year all the things that I would accomplish, all the things that I would do uh, in my life. And I got to tell you, uh, I am disappointed in myself. <laughs> I, I am. I had written out basically this dream scenario where I would... Uh, uh, where I would serve in the mission field for six months out of the year in Europe somewhere, you know, really hard like Europe. And then I would come back and I would be this awesome businessman at this new job I had. And I had these, I, it was just success everywhere. Success in, in my spiritual life, success in my work life, and everything was going to work out perfectly. And then I, I started my job. And I realized that, that no, that's not going to be how how I thought. Um, yeah, that first year, uh, actually, I just kind of spun that whole vision on, on its head. Uh, we, Bonnie and I were a part of a really awesome uh, Christian community um, at, at college, and then when we left college, um, we moved up about an hour and a half away to Portland, and uh, we were just kind of cut off from that community, and um, 
And I, I started working these insane work weeks and just got tired out. And, you know, when I did have free time, I didn't want to spend it reading my Bible or, or spending it in prayer. I just wanted to veg out, you know. And uh, I just wanted to survive. I didn't, I, it wasn't really, uh, didn't really feel that challenge like, okay, I should be like, pouring out all my stress and anxiety to the Lord. Uh, you know, at the same time, Bonnie was, uh, was really sick with vertigo to the point where any free time she had, she was asleep. You know, she just had to rest. She couldn't do anything. So it was this really dry time um, in my life. And, and as I continue on, um, you know, looking at my year-by-year plan, I'm getting, you know, I see this like further and further off the goals that I had set. And um, I often wonder, you know, why our dreams and desires for a vibrant spiritual life, why they often go unfulfilled. You ever wonder that? You know, why we, we have this, this great ideal of what our life in Christ should look like, but yet uh, a lot of the times that it goes unfulfilled and unmet. You know, for most of us, I think we've lived or are living with a sense of unfulfilled spirituality. Like, there's something that we're missing. And, um, you know, we want to experience this full and vibrant relationship with the Lord. um, But instead, we're discouraged by our marriage or our family relationships or our work situation. And it just bogs us down. And and we don't really experience um, what we would consider to be uh, fulfilled spirituality. And so... You know, how many of you guys ever feel like that? Ever feel like, you can raise your hand. I think, hopefully, we can, most of us can be honest. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, some of you got it down. So, I'll have you guys come up and share, <laughs> share the secrets. I, I'd like to know. Um, but, no. And, and today, I'm not, I'm not going to solve the problem. I'm, I'm not here to say, well, if you're feeling unfulfilled, then try life groups. No, that's not... What I'm saying, I'm not saying that life groups equal fulfilled spirituality. That's not, that's not it. But what I am saying and what my goal is, is to get us closer to how God intended for us to live. So if we can just get closer to the model and the idea that, that God wants us to live, I think I'll have done my job today. Um, and we're going to look at Romans 12 today to see how this works, how, how God intended for us to live. And I drew out three major points um, from, from Romans 12 that we'll look at. Um, if you guys have read the book of Romans, uh, the first 12 chapters of Romans are about uh, the saving mercy of Jesus. They're, they're about our salvation, uh, how that works, how we're saved, you know, and what that means. And then 12 on is kind of the, what we do with it. So now that you are saved, do this. Now that you are saved, this is what, how we should practice and live out our salvation. And you guys probably know uh, 12.1, talking about being a living sacrifice, that we, we die to ourselves, we have this new life in Christ, and, um, and, and so we, we offer ourselves in total devotion to God. That's what we're supposed to do, that's our response. Um, that's our worship to God, is offering ourselves in total devotion to God, um, so, so 3 through 8, verses 3 through 8, basically uh, describe the context in, in how that's supposed to work. Um, and the, what became clear to me in, in reading the passage is, is that we need each other. Is that God intended us for, for us to live uh, in community and, um, and as his own body. You know, he uses the, the imagery of the body of Christ for a reason. Um, it's because we are, we are interdependent on each other in this. And that's, that's how God designed it. That's how God set it up. He set us up as a, a, a functioning body where he's the head and we're the, uh, we're the part. So he's sending the signals and uh, we're carrying out what he wants us to do. So, um, so we're going to look at these three points that help us think about how God wants us to live. And so we'll start with verse 3. Verse 3 says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. So this first point, 
um, is to live realistically. His first point is to live realistically. Um, to live with a realistic perception of who you are and how you fit in the body of Christ. Um, to not consider yourselves as more important than anybody else uh, in the body of Christ and that God has designed us to uh, be interdependent and so we're all vital members of the body of Christ. So, and if we make our faith all about us, if it's, if it's just me and God, there, I believe that you won't experience that spiritual fulfillment because you're not where you should be. Um, and so it, it's hard because uh, our pride tells us that we need to be important, right? Like, we all have a desire, like, we, we need to be important. And uh, we tend to, that makes us tend to elevate our needs to the forefront and everybody else's needs down here. But that's not how it works um, within this uh, family of God. It's hard, though, because we live in a culture that focuses on the individual and the accomplishments of what an individual can do. And so we're, we're taught to, uh, to dream big. And um, if you grew up on movies and TV like me, you know that you can do anything if you just believe in yourself. If you just believe in yourself, you, singular, you can do whatever you want to do. And so I knew for a fact in the third grade that someday I would be president. I knew it. I knew it. In fact, in fact I had memorized all 42 presidents up to that point, and that's that's how I spent my spare time as a kid. I just, I had these great political aspirations as a kid. And, um, and they died, and then I wanted to be a, you know, an NBA star, that, which was more realistic. And then, and, then I, and then I wanted to be a rock star, you know, or whatever. And if you would have heard my band, that, you, that you would have laughed. So, um, so, yeah, we all have these big dreams and passions of how big and important we can be and how we can establish our own identity. And, and uh, so Paul's call here is to not think so highly of yourself, that it's not walking in this life with Christ. It's not all about you. And um, so that's hard. You know, I was thinking about, about uh, wanting to be president in the third grade and, and um, Bonnie and I, in May, we went to, uh, I went and saw a friend graduate from law school. And out of the blue, I just got these thoughts like, yeah, you know, I could, I could go to law school. And I started joking about it with Bonnie, and Bonnie didn't find that funny. <laughs> Bonnie didn't think that was, that was, that was too funny because she had just helped me get through seminary. So I don't know. There was a joke, you know. God, God's called me. God's called me here, and it's just funny that you got like that. Or you ever you're on the basketball court, and you 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 hope that a scout's going to drive by and see your <laughs> see your jump shot, you know. Um, but we all want to be important, you know. We all we all want to be uh, to be identified like Michael Jordan or something, you know. And when it comes to our uh, spiritual life. Uh, we make it often about our own individual accomplishments and all about what we do. And um, the result is that it tends to put our needs above what God's trying to do through the body of Christ and that God hasn't given you every single gift on the list. I'm sorry, he hasn't given me every single gift on the list. And we're incomplete. And, uh, you know, I believe that we will find fulfillment when we know who we are and we have a realistic perception of ourselves within the body of Christ. So, you know, think about how this could change how you're living now. You know, instead of coming to church on Sunday seeking to get something out of it or seeking to be wowed or being amazed at our amazing sound and light show. We don't, no, we don't really have an amazing sound and light show. But instead of that, like, think about how you, what you bring and, and who you bless by being here. Um, we're talking about life groups. You know, as you guys sign up for life groups, instead of thinking about how the, whatever life group can improve your life, Think about how your presence can bless that life group, like what you bring. And in our life groups, we're really going to encourage people to discover and use their gifts um, in, in a life group. And, you know, an, just to, another point on this. Um, 
This could mean instead of choosing a life group um, that's more based on your age and preference, you might put yourself out there and go with a more intergenerational group. And I was blessed. Um, we met as life group leaders on Friday. And um, when I asked about, you know, how are you guys feeling about intergenerational life groups, everybody was saying, we want that. You know, we want to experience that. And that was a real blessing to me, you know. So I would encourage you to, to, uh, to think that way. And... Um, you know, ultimately, God re- intends for us to live with a realistic perception of who we are. So, I, and I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade here, but we need to li- live realistically and think of ourselves in sober judgment in relation to everybody else. Like, think within the body of Christ. So, let's go on to the second one. Um, we're going to read uh, verse 4. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not have, all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. This, um, this verse really struck me. Like, I had to read it over and over again to kind of get at what it's saying. Um, saying that we're individually members of, of one another, that, that we, we are interdependent, that... Uh, we actually, there's a sense that we belong to each other, that, uh, that Jesus desires for us to live unified. And, um, you know, we often talk about that and we understand that in marriage, you know, how the two shall become one. But, you know, if you think about a body, if I was to come up here and pull my spleen out, let's just say I have my spleen right here. Um, so the spleen, if I left it over there, it's not going to serve any purpose, is it? The only purpose that the spleen serves is inside my body, right? So I'm sorry if anybody's lost a spleen here. I'm not trying to bring back any, <laughs> any images of that. But our organs are not designed to function independently. They're designed to function interdependently. And so it's the same way that we are. We're designed to function interdependently. God's given us these gifts, and we're, we're all, we all belong to each other, like... Um, and while the, uh, in that we have different functions, like the heart functions differently from the liver, it functions differently from the lungs, um, but they all have the same purpose, and that's to sustain life, right? So it's, we all have these different functions, but we, we're made of one body, and we have one purpose, in one Savior and one Lord. So... Um, I was also thinking, not to tell, you know, make too many gruesome images, but I, I talked to my father-in-law. Um, my father-in-law is missing the, uh, the end of his finger, and uh, he used to work as a, uh, um, work in printed circuit boards, made printed circuit boards, and he was working on a press one time, and he got his finger caught in the press. And so he, uh, he was trying to get it out, and he pulled it, and the end of his finger came off. And everybody was scrambling to find it, and they finally found it. But by the time they went to the doctor um, to sew it back on, it had been away from his body for so long that it had died. So, um, you know, it's just like the same thing. If we're apart from the body, um, we're not going to serve our purpose, you know, and we're going to die. Like, God's, God's designed us to fit interdependently. So... And I think one of the major reasons we feel spiritually unfulfilled or isolated is because we don't understand what our function is in the body of Christ. And, and to do that, we need to be in community and we need to be serving together. So, um, the, we do let things get in the way, don't we? we sometimes we let, uh, like the early church, like 1 Corinthians, Paul went after um, the people had established gaps between themselves based on wealth and economy. And sometimes we let those things get in the way. And um, we need to eliminate those and, and know that Christ is, is everyone's, uh, everyone's focus. And, and to not let those things or, or different, um, you know, identify ourselves with different hobbies or groups, but let's just have our identity in Christ. And... Um, I love the picture in the book of Acts that, that everybody had everything in common. Um, everybody in, the, in, the, uh, in that early church, it seemed like 
they all viewed each other as equally important to themselves. And so their stuff they didn't view as just their own, but uh, everybody else in that community. And uh, so Christ was, was the most important thing. And so that, that challenges me. Uh, that challenges me because often when I have time or when I have extra money, I, I want to spend it on me. You know, I want to spend it on me. But instead of, of doing that and just having um, my hobbies and my passions um, separate me from other people, um, let's think how we can involve others and bless others in that. I've, since I've been here, I've been really blessed by people, by guys especially, just asking me to go do stuff. Stuff that they enjoy. Um, whether it's fishing or golfing or basketball, whatever, it's just great when we can do those things together. Um, so, yeah, so I challenge you to do that. And another thing um, that we can do to, to live corporately, and that, I might have missed that. This, uh, this part's called live corporately, okay? So, live corporately. Uh, one thing that we can do to live corporately is to uh, make it easier to get together with others. Make it easier. Sometimes, if you're like uh, me and my wife, you feel like everything has to be perfect before people show up. So you spend two hours totally gutting your house and reorganizing, and then you make sure that you look good too, right? So you've got to make sure that you're all spruced up and ready to go. Um, let's make it easier than that. Let's, let's live real and make it easier where people can just come in and out and uh, you know, just live, live in a more natural way and live in and just be just be more vulnerable uh, to each other so I encourage you to do that um, and also we need to make time for each other uh, Bill was talking earlier about busyness and I'd say in a sense we're all addicted to busyness it's part of that importance thing if you're busy you're obviously important so let's be busy and we need to make time uh, to just be with each other so let yeah, so let's do that and because uh, we belong to each other. And if we don't make time, and that's why I'm excited about life groups because it really it's, it's making time for each other. Um, if we don't make time, then we're going to miss out and we might not serve our function and what Christ in, intended us um, in the body. So live corporately. So let's move on to this third point. Um, and this is uh, verse 5, I believe. So having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So God called us not just to live realistically or live corporately, but he also called us to live specifically. Live specifically. Yet you have a specific function, um, a specific gift that God has given you. I love it that um, these gifts are given according to the grace given to us, which basically means we don't earn them. We don't earn them. God gives them to us. Um, they're free gifts. Just like salvation when we live in Christ, God just gives us gifts. And the cool thing about that is that our gifts aren't about us, they're about God. And so when we serve, and sometimes we elevate people's gifts, but people's gifts are all about God because God has given people's gifts according to his will and according to the body. And so um, when we see God work through other people, we can just praise him for what he's doing because he's doing it. So our gifts are all about God and not about us. And um, notice there's an action here. Paul tells us to use our gifts. So it's possible to have our gifts and not use them. It's possible to have gifts and, and not use them. And Paul is calling us to use those gifts and to serve their specific purpose in the body of Christ. So this goes beyond knowing what our gifts are. It goes into putting them to use. Um, and the only way, really, that we're going to discover what these gifts are is when they're confirmed in, in community, when we're actually using them. And if you don't know, and I don't, I don't think I know uh, completely uh, what my gifts are, try things out. It's that easy. Just serve together. And, um, you know, again, this message isn't about life groups, but 
Life groups will be a great context in which to, uh, to try these gifts out, where we're, we are setting aside time to serve together. Um, so yeah, use your gifts. And uh, this, what this also means is that uh, we need to focus on how we're gifted and protect that. Um, I'm really glad that Kevin's uh, teaching a boundaries class, because I think it's really important. A lot of times we're asked to do things that are outside of what God's intended for us. And um, being nice people, we like to say yes, at least I do. Um, but God's called us to live specifically. And so to know how he's gifted us and to reserve our time and our energy to serve in those gifts. And I, I'm not saying that there won't be times where you won't serve in, a, in somewhere outside of your gifting, but I think the message here is to focus on your strengths. Um, because God cares about how we do something, as, as, he, uh, as he shares here. You know, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, service. And, and the attitude here is, is joy. The attitude is joy. Uh, people are doing these things because they actually enjoy them. They want to do them. And so to do that, I, I really feel like God's, God needs to have gifted you. Um, because if you, if you serve too much outside of your gifts... Uh, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out. Um, I used to be a recruiter and, um, for a staffing company, and so we'd line people up for different jobs. And, and our slogan as a staffing company was, people fit perfectly. We're going to find the, exact, the, the right specific person for your job. But sometimes when you're running up against deadlines and you just got to get somebody out there, um, we came up with this slogan called, make it fit. Well, <laughs> if... If they're not perfect, that's okay. We're just going to make it fit. And so we'd put people out there and, you know, generally they didn't stay on the job too long, you know, but we had to hit those deadlines, right? So we, we, had, to, we had to make it fit. So let's not make it fit with our spiritual life. You know, let's not be so attached to uh, programs and doing things a certain way that we have to make somebody fit into that, um, fit into that system. So... And I love that Paul wants us to use our gifts to the best that we can. Um, I was really caught by the, uh, the leading, the one who leads with zeal. Because a lot of times I want to lead with laziness. <laughs> you know, I want to I just get by. But, but Paul calls us to use our gifts to the utmost, to the, the best of our ability. So that's the, uh, that's the third way in which we're supposed to live, is to live specifically. So let's talk about how that applies here and now and, and in your life. And I would say that, that the, the real deal here is that we're designed to need each other. And that when we go through life, we really do need each other. And th j not just for the support and encouragement and life that we get from each other, which we do, but other people need us. And so the, the bottom line is that we need to exchange independence for interdependence. And we need to exchange the things that would separate us for the things that can bring us together and, and live with a realistic perspective, live with a corporate perspective, and think about how we specifically serve uh, in the body. And I think this is profoundly countercultural. I, I, I do. I think that, that this is a profound statement. You know, when um, in John 17, uh, when Jesus is praying before the Father, he prays that we may be perfectly one so that the world will know that the Father sent the Son. So when we are perfectly one, when we function like a body, that's a profound statement to the world. Like, hey, here's all these Christians and they want to be together and they serve each other and they love each other. Uh, that's different, you know, because I'm all about me and um, elevating myself, and my identity is about what makes me different. And uh, so we need to exchange that, that sense of, of independence for interdependence within the body of Christ. And I'm just talking about the body of Christ. I mean, that's not anything political or anything like that. But within the body of Christ, we need to be interdependent. Um, you know, I was struck by a song. I've been listening to this, this band called uh, The Fleet Foxes, uh, they're a, a band from Seattle. They're kind of getting big and not a Christian band, 
But um, I heard this song this week called Helplessness Blues, and it really keyed me into uh, the fact that the world is also hungry for this. And uh, he says, um, I was raised up believing I was somehow unique, like a snowflake distinct among snowflakes, unique in each way you can see. And now after some thinking, I'd say I'd rather be a functioning cog in some great machinery serving something beyond me. And then he goes on to say he doesn't know what that is, but that's his desire, that if my life is all about me, that's pretty lame. Like if, if my life is, is completely for my enjoyment and, and for my purpose, then, then I'm not making any difference. My life really doesn't matter outside of myself. And so it's cool because God's wired us to serve in something bigger than ourselves. And, and that's the body of Christ. And the good news is that we know what that is, that we're not scrambling and searching. We know that we're supposed to fit in the body of Christ. And so, as far as where our church is headed, I, I do want to just mention life groups and, and why I think that they're so key um, for where our church is headed. Um, because we really want the church to be a presence in the community. And um, we really want to live this out. And um, that means that we need to be together. And so life groups is really that time to set aside time because we are people, it's reality. We have schedules, you know, we have jobs. And so we're trying to think of how can we best live that out where we're at um, with the resources that we have. And so it's really setting aside time to live out life in Christ. And, um, and that's the heart, is that, that each life group would be a Christ-centered community. And, um, and the hope is that someday, like, most of the ministry that happens within the church will happen through life groups. Is that when people are in need, that a, a life group community that's really tight will go and visit someone in the hospital, or, the, or they'll go and serve, or they'll, um, you know run nursery one night or, or reach out to our neighbors. Like, I really want to see people come to know the Lord through our life groups. And so my, my hope today is not to guilt you into joining a life group, but just to challenge you to think about it. And um, you'll have to think fast because this is the last day to sign up. So, um, but no, uh, we, we're just really excited about what God's going to do. And um, I would say uh, this, this, um, this Friday... September 21st is going to be the life group kickoff night. Um, it, it's going to be here, 7 to 8. We're going to get together. Um, a few of the life group leaders are going to share. are going to spend some time praying together. And then you're going to basically have a first meeting time with your, with your different life groups. And so I encourage you to come to that, um, 7 to 8. And uh, just, just join in what I feel like God is doing. You know, I, um, I talked about uh, the, this idea of life groups and... Um, how it, we live in and live out and live for all um, in life groups with another pastor. And um, he's excited about it. And he's like, this is what we've been looking for at our church. And so, you know, maybe, you know, that they're going to start something similar. But it's just a challenge um, to really be the body of Christ and, and to, uh, to find how we function in the body of Christ. So, anyways... Um, I love you guys, and uh, let me pray for us, and then we have, we have about 10 minutes where we can, uh, we can just spend some time together. So, uh, Lord, we just thank you so much, God, for what you're doing, what you're doing at Good News and in Ferndale, um, Lord, what you're doing at Whatcom County. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you've created us uh, differently, and that we all have different gifts, and we all serve um, in different ways, and, and that's a beautiful thing when we all work together. And so I just pray that you would help us to, to work together as the body of Christ and, and take ownership of how you've, uh, you've gifted us, God. And, and this is all for your glory and because we love you. And so we just uh, thank you and praise you, God. Um, Lord, help us. Help us, to, uh, help us to follow your will more closely, God. Um, Lord, help us to uh, find um, spiritual fulfillment, God, and, and what that means, Father. Lord, help us to redefine what we're looking for, God. Um, and Lord, just go before us um, and be speaking to us this week, God. Um, I just pray, God, as, as uh, life groups start, Lord, that you would, you, your hand would be in it. And uh, Lord, we're just excited, God, of, 
Um, I feel like you've been here with us today, Father. I know you have, and so we just uh, praise you um, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, you're dismissed, so have a great week. Well, I guess, I guess actually, let me say, the kids will be dismissed in 10 minutes, so you're actually dismissed to talk amongst yourselves, so... <laughs>